Welcome to the session on noun clauses. As we already know, a clause can be divided into two types. One is the main clause and the other one is the dependent clause. A main clause is a clause that can form a complete sentence and it has a subject and a predicate. So a main clause can stand alone. Even if the main clause alone is used, it makes sense. Whereas dependent clause is used along with the independent clause. When the dependent clause is used alone, it will not create a full sentence and it needs further information to turn it into one. For example, in the sentence, the cat is playing with the rat. Now, this is a complete sentence and we can call it a main clause. I'm adding something to the sentence. The cat is playing with the rat that ate the banana. Now, here, that, the rat that ate the banana is not a complete sentence. And it makes sense only when it is used with the main clause. The cat is playing with the rat that ate the banana. Now, clauses can be classified into different types. One is the noun clause, which does the function of a noun. Another one is the adverb clause, which does the function of an adverb. The next one is the adjectival clause or relative clause, which does the function of an adjective. In today's class, we are going to look at the functions of noun clause. Now, before we know the functions of the noun clause, we need to know the functions of a noun. Now, what are the functions of a noun? As we know, noun is a word that names things, animals, or places, or people. So, noun is known as a naming word. So, noun can function like a subject. In the example given below, Raj loves Simran. Now here, Raj is a noun. Simran is also a noun. And here, Raj plays the function of a subject. Similarly, in the, sec in the second um, sentence, uh, sorry, the same sentence, Raj loves Simran. Simran is also a noun, and it comes in the object place. So the noun, Simran, functions like an object. Now, the nouns can also function like a subject complement. What is subject complement? It can be an adjective or a noun or a pronoun which follows a linking verb. To make it more clear, a subject complement describes the subject by completing the meaning of the linking verb between them. Look at the example given below. John is a doctor. Now, here we have two nouns, John and doctor. What is John here? John is the subject. So, John is a noun that does the function of a subject. Now, what is the doctor here, the noun doctor? Doctor is not an object. Remember, an object is the, uh, the noun that... Uh, is affected by the action. Here there is no action verb. It is a form of um, B, which is a linking verb. So John is a doctor. In this sentence, doctor is not the object, but doctor is a subject complement because it describes the subject. Doctor is a word which describes John. So doctor is not an object but it forms a subject complement in this sentence. Now, usually there are a lot of linking verbs that does the function that, uh, you know, that um, uh, causes the noun to do the function of the subject complement. The verbs like taste, turn, appear, be, become, feel, grow, look, seem, and smell. So we talked about the four, uh, sorry, three um, functions of noun. Noun can be a subject. Noun can be an object. Noun can also function as subject complement. That is, 
the noun can describe the subject by completing the meaning of the linking verb. Noun can also function like an object complement. If subject complement is a word that describes the subject, object complement is a word, a noun or an adjective, which describes the object or which adds meaning to the object, which renames the object or modifies it. So basically, object complement describes the object. It can be an adjective or a noun. Let's look at the examples. They elected Martin their president. Now, can you identify the subject, ver uh, verb, object, and all? They is the subject here, which is a pronoun. Elected is the verb. Martin is the object. So, uh, we have two uh, nouns here coming in the place of the object. One is Martin and the other one is president. Now, if you look at these two, we understand that the, pre the word precedent is what describes the word Martin. So the precedent is the object complement here. Now remember, uh, usually in an object complement, uh, a statement where there's an object complement, unless the object complement is used, the, the sentence becomes meaningless. It becomes incomplete. So you can say they elected Martin, but they elected Martin for what? The sentence is incomplete. So to make it complete, we use the object complement. They elected Martin, their president. Similarly, they named the child Jutin. So they is a subject here. Named is the object here. We have two nouns coming in the place of object. Okay, One is the child and the other one is Jutin. Now, if you look at this, the child is the object and Jitin is the object complement because it describes the object. It renames the object. So that is the fourth function of a noun. Next one, noun can function like an appositive. What is an appositive? It looks more or less like a complement. Okay. It describes the subject or object and is used in the same way as the subject. Okay. It, it, it also describes the subject or the object and it is used in the same way as a subject and it follows the subject closely. Remember for a subject complement, there was a linking verb between the subject and the complement. But here there will be no linking verb but it just follows the object simultaneously. If you look at the example, you'll understand. John, my next door neighbor, does not like cats. Let me rephrase the sentence. John is my next door, next, next door neighbor. Now here, John is uh, the subject. Is is the linking verb. My next door neighbor that is the object, uh, sorry, that is the complement. Okay, so John is my next door, next door neighbor. In this, my next door neighbor is a phrase which functions like a complement, subject complement. But in this sentence, John, my next door neighbor, does not like cats. Here, uh, there is no linking verb. Even if you remove my next door neighbor, the sentence, the meaning of the sentence does not change. Okay, but still it describes more, the, more of the subject. So John, my next door neighbor, here my next door neighbor functions like an appositive. Similarly, a surprise awaited him, the news of his uncle's promotion. Now here, the news of his uncle's promotion is a description of what the surprise is. So a surprise is the subject here. Awaited is the verb. Him is the object. Okay, but the news of uncle's promotion does not describe him, so it's not an object complement, but it is more of a description of the surprise. So the news of his uncle's promotion is a phrase which functions like an appositive. Now, appositives can be defining or non-defining. 
What is the difference between this? When an appositive is used, if it adds more to the um, meaning of the sentence, or if uh, the appositive is removed from the sentence, the sentence does not create, uh, does not make any sense. In that sense, we call it defining. That is, we need the appositive in the sentence to make it meaningful. So in such cases, appositives are defining. Appositives are non-defining in the sense, even if the appositive is removed from the sentence, the sentence still remains meaningful. So it is, it becomes, it can be used as a defining factor or a non-defining factor. So we talked of five functions of noun. Nouns can be subject, nouns can be object, nouns can be subject complement or object complement. It can also function like an appositive. Now coming to noun clauses. Remember, we described noun clauses as dependent clauses that function like a noun. Okay, they function like a noun and they have the same functions as the noun. So you must be knowing what the functions of the noun clauses are now, right? Let's look at it with examples. First one, just like a noun, a noun clause can be a subject. Look at the following sentences. What he said is totally false. Now here, what he said is the noun clause and it comes in the place of the subject. So it's a sub it, fu it functions like a subject. Similarly, in the next line, why he resigned his job is still a mystery. So here, why he resigned his job is the subject. That is a noun clause. So noun clause does the function of the subject here. That diseases are God's punishment for evil doing is an old exploded idea. Now here, the clause, the noun clause, that diseases are God's punishment for evil doing is a noun clause and that it comes in the place of the subject. It is the, that's the function of the subject. Similarly, it can function like an object. Okay? It is an object not only of a verb, but also of a participle or a preposition or an infinitive. So you must remember that you are not children in this sentence. You is the subject, remember is the verb, and that you're not children is an object of the verb. Let's look at the next one. Hoping that her son would return, she kept on praying. So here the subject is she, okay? And the verbs are praying and hoping, okay? And uh, the object is the hope that her son would return. Okay, so that is an object here. Next sentence, we are really surprised at what has ha happened. Here, we is the subject. Surprised is the verb. What has happened is the object. So, noun clause can also function like an object. Now, it can function like a complement also. They complement the linking verb. Look at this example. The trouble with a kitten is that it becomes a rat. Now here, the trouble with the kitten is a subject. Okay, the trouble is a subject. Is is the linking verb. And what is the trouble? That it becomes a cat. So that is a noun clause, which functions like a subject complement. Next one. The question is why such things should happen. Now here, subject is the question. Okay, is is the linking verb. Why such things should happen is a noun clause which functions like a complement because it describes the subject question. It seems that he has something to hide. Now here again, that he has something to hide is a noun clause which functions like a complement. Seems is the linking verb here. Next one. What I like about Clive is that he is not alive. Now here, that he is not alive and what I like about Clive, both are noun clauses, okay? What I like about Clive is the subject here. It's a noun clause which functions like a subject. Is is the linking verb. That he is not alive is the complement, the subject complement. Now, noun clause can also function like an appositive. As we said, appositive describes a subject or object and is used in the same way as a subject or the object. 
and it's a word that follows the subject or the object and refers to it. Now in the sentence, the saying that good fences make good neighbors has a lot of truth in it. Now here the saying that good fences make good neighbors. Now here that good fences make good neighbors is a noun clause which functions like an appositive. Okay, it's not a subject complement because there is no linking verb between the saying and good fences make good neighbors. So it functions like an appositive. Next sentence. The belief that diseases are God's punishment is absolutely wrong. Now here again, the belief is the subject. Okay, that diseases are God's punishment is the uh, appositive. Okay, now in both these examples, appositives are defining in nature. Remember, a few minutes back we said that appositives can be defining or non-defining. That is, if you take away the appositive, the sentence becomes meaningless. You say that that appositive is defining in nature because it adds to the meaning of the sentence. So in both these examples, appositives are defining in nature. Similarly, Epicurus first propounded the idea that matter is composed of atoms. Now here again, that matter is composed of atoms is an appositive that describes the object, the idea. So to wind up in this class, we learned what the functions of noun are. We also learned what the functions of noun clauses are. Noun clauses are said to function like a noun. So it does all the functions of a noun. It acts as a subject, it acts as an object, it acts as a complement, it also acts as an appositor. I hope the class was clear. We will have uh, further exercises in the classroom. Thank you.